Welcome to premiere number 10 of the Internal Mapper Reality and our discussion on meditation. Tonight's uh, session will cover six areas. We'll immediately after this short introduction, we'll do our one minute meditation as normal. And that's our practice. And then uh, we'll go into part two of session six, Introduction to Meditation, The Three Realms. Again, looking at the three ways we interact with our reality, the three levels. And we'll do our guided meditation, walking through the body. And this is an excellent practice for detaching from what you're observing and not interfering, right? So it's that age-old uh, expression of uh, doing nothing. You're observing, but you're not going to do anything. You're just going to observe. Then we'll go into the Internal Map of Reality, Session 6, Part 1. We're going to start looking into values. We're going to define, in terms of the internal map, what a value is, you know, the thing that's most important to you, not to others, but to you only. And then I'll introduce a little exercise, exercise 13. We'll begin listing the things that are important to you. Okay, it's, we'll start just with a list. That's our first uh, exercise after the part one. And then we'll wrap it up with a bonus number 12, 21 questions. What are the questions and types of answers that we can expect on the three realms? Well, that's the um, agenda for tonight. Uh, we're going to go into the uh, one minute meditation now. So just get yourself comfortable, your eyes open or your eyes closed, whichever you feel comfortable with. Or if you just want to, for one minute, just stay in silence. But if you're going to practice the detachment meditation, when you get distracted, when, when a thought enters you in whatever frame, in whatever mode, just politely disconnect and go back to your focal point. Okay, so let's do the one minute meditation now. And welcome to the Introduction to Meditation, Session 6, Part 2, The Three Realms, Your Conscious, st conscious States. We're now moving on from the um, first Part 1, where we looked at uh, just mainly a review and talking about the possibility that there are three states or three realms. So let's look at these conscious states. And we have some terms that we'll be going through. So we'll be looking at a conscious state and the term awakenings. Now, you're probably familiar with this term, and this is quite used a lot in awakening. But I like to think that this is what happens when you meditate. Now, the process of detachment, I've hinted at this, 
that when you become aware that you are no longer attending to or focusing on whatever it is you were doing, if you were eyes open looking at a spot on the wall or with your eyes closed looking at the fuzzy dot, you get distracted, you start going off into a thought. Now at some point when you become aware that you are no longer attending or focusing, that's the awakening moment. That's the magic. So you, be, you wake up as you unfold and become aware of something new. Okay? Very powerful moment and something to be sensitive to and to acknowledge it. This is why we always say to acknowledge the change of state very, very gently and to depart from that with respect and very gently and go back to whatever it is you are focusing on. And then uh, there's this subconscious state. And um, I like to think that that's the state where we do self-adjustments. And self-adjustments are very, very important. We self-regulate, we organize ourselves, we heal ourselves, and it's all done in the subconscious realm. And the self-adjustment can be interfered with. So your job is to promote self-healing, self-adjustment. Finally, the unconscious realm, and I introduced the term boundaries. So we have boundaries within our unconscious realm. So recognizing when you've come to a boundary in the unconscious realm and the decision of whether you want to cross the boundary or stay within it. The term synchronicity, very important to understand there's something called cosmic habit force, that when you uh, say when we were talking about self-talk, when you establish a new self-talk or a positive one, it can take a while. You may have to repeat it, and it may be very frequently that you have to, you know, acknowledge the frame that is coming to you and say, oh, no, I reject that frame. I replace it with, and you may have to do this over and over. And then finally, it all clicks in. It becomes part of your habit. Well, this happens on a much bigger scale, too where your self-energy, your self-image that you're projecting, it becomes a cosmic habit, right? So all of your things that you're doing, this is why we say meditation is a practice, all of this practice eventually becomes a habit, becomes a natural activity. Finally, and I've mentioned this before, your timeline and doing a reconciliation. So what is a realm? So here's some definitions from Webster, Marion Webster. Realm's a kingdom. It's a, it's a sphere, a domain. Okay. And the third one is a, a primary marine or terrestrial biogeographical area. So it, it's a division. So a realm is a, a physical area, area, right? And it has in some cases, a very significant meaning, so that if you are in one realm and move to another, there may be different rules that apply. So in our conscious state, which is the first realm, our day-to-day, -day, you, you know, your conscious state, you have a, a conscious mind, and I've been indicating that it's not the major part of you. The big part of you is subconscious, the other realm. So in your day-to-day -day subconscious conscious mind, you can do things, you can be things. And it may appear that in your, sub in your conscious mind, that that's all there is, okay? Um, in the unconscious realm, a lot of work has been done. And um, there's someone called Carl Jung, and in the uh, 20s, he did a lot of work on something called synchronicity. And you see here the two dolphins dancing and playing, and they seem to be in connection. So there's a little quote here from Carl Jung. Synchronicity is an ever-present reality for those who have the eyes to see. So the point here is that in your conscious realm, you may not 
acknowledge or even see that there's all these things happening uh, around you uh, in your unconscious realm. So this synchronicity is everywhere. And I like to refer to something called the I Ching. I've mentioned it before. And what it tries to do, it tries to look at the example in life that everything you do is connected to everything you've done. And in a sense, uh, with the I Ching, what you would do is you would traditionally throw sticks or straws or coins. And depending on how they land, it will have a meaning. And, and this may seem kind of trivial. And a lot of cultures have this. In some cultures, they throw stones, right? Some read leaves. They take your tea leaves after you drank the tea and just turn it around and then look at the leaves. So the way things are arranged, align themselves, is a synchronicity like the, dolphs, like the dolphins dancing. Okay? And so you can look up each thing and, and each of these coincidence, what looks like a coincidence, has meaning. And so <clears throat> there's something called a trigrams, three lines. And there are these uh, uh, eight trigrams. And they each have a name, the earth, the mountain, the water, the wind, the thunder, the fire, the lake, and the heaven. And when they are combined, if they form 64 different possibilities. And um, under the uh, understanding of Tai Chi and, and uh, the I Ching, all forces will resolve into another force. So things change. So um, you could see that heaven, which is all solid lines, can evolve into wind with one line at the bottom, can evolve into water with two broken lines, one on each side, can revolve into mountain with two broken lines at the uh, top, and earth with all broken lines, which can evolve into thunder, and then can evolve into fire, and then can evolve into a lake. So if you look at the example here of, of the lake, you can see that you have two solid lines with two broken lines on the top. You can actually envision water being held in that upper area there. And in the bottom of the earth, you can see that water would flow through those openings, so it's all open, as opposed to heaven, which is uh, all ward off, where everything is closed, and then the term ward off is there. So, um, the study of the I Ching and Tai Chi and, and how these forces uh, work together would be a lifelong study. But I guess the point here is that I want to mention that there is a synchronicity, there's, a, there's something going on, and you can trust it. You can allow the fact that it will forever transition from one phase down into the other. So Yang will reach a, a summit, a peak, and then it will drop off and become yin, and the yin will make, reach a low, and it will come out of the low and then begin the process over and over and over again. So understanding that this is a way of nature, that the strong will become the weak, and the weak will become the strong. So here's a look at different systems that use the synchronicity idea. You can see the different cultures. So here's an African culture that use these numbers, or the repetition of numbers. Here's the Ch Chinese approach using the I Ching. And there's an Arabian approach using symbols. And then there's a Liberian approach where they use more like binary numbers. So this idea of repeating sequences has always been present in many, many different cultures. Now, your understanding of how the three realms work together and to repeat. You have a conscious realm where you are doing things on a day-to-day -day basis, but that's the smaller of the three realms. And then you have your subconscious realm, <clears throat> which basically keeps you alive. It keeps you functioning and looks after you. And it's much bigger than your conscious realm. And then there is the unconscious realm that surrounds you that you live in. And it is persistent. It is infinite. It's much bigger than you are huge. 
So understand these three realms and that you can live um, with them. So we'll be going on now to section uh, uh, to part three next, three body, three body centering. And uh, so that's basically it for today. And I appreciate you taking the time and, you know, watching these uh, things with me. Now, I wish I could take more time, and I will. And uh, we really should have an, more of an interactive discussion in order to um, dig deeper into these. And that's why I'm hoping that, uh, you know, we can get Rose back. We can do some uh, just general discussion. So until then, enjoy this, and we'll... Uh, take some opportunity to have some discussion on our Sunday reviews and, and previews. Thank you again and see you in the next session. Okay, we're going to do a guided meditation. So just sit comfortably in your chair, let your eyes close and just listen to my voice. We're going to walk through your body. I'm going to mention a part of your body and what I'd like you to do is just take your awareness there. Don't do anything. Just go there in your mind and observe that part of your body. I'm going to start with your feet. Take your awareness to your feet, the soles of your feet, your toes, your ankles, tops of your feet, and even inside your foot. Take all your awareness to your feet. Still not moving or doing anything, take your awareness in both legs from your ankles to your knees. Just move your mind's eye and focus in on the area from your ankles to your knees. Calves, shin, skin. Okay, good. Now, we're going to move your attention from your knees in both legs to your hips. From your knees to your hips. Become totally aware of that area. We're going to keep moving our attention now from your hips to your ribs, your stomach area, your lower back, your sides, the whole ab abdominal area, from your hips to your ribs. You might be aware of your stomach moving in and out as you breathe. But again, just take your attention there. Now we'll move up to your rib cage, from your diaphragm up to your shoulders, your sides of your ribs, your chest, your upper back. And again, you might be aware of your lungs, you might be aware of your heart. Just become totally aware of that area. And again, without changing anything, we're just moving your attention, move to your hands. Become totally aware of your palms of your hands, your fingers, tops of your hands, the sides. Good. We're going to move now from your wrists to your elbows. Just your attention. Leave everything else the way it is. From your wrists to your elbows. Again in both arms, we're going to move now and focus in on the area from your elbows to your shoulders. Just the area from your elbows to your shoulders. Let your attention now go to your shoulders, between your shoulder and your neck. Along your neck to the front of your neck and back of your neck and the sides. Your attention now goes up to your chin and the cheeks and around your mouth. And then around your nose and eyes. 
and your forehead and your eyebrows. Let your attention now move around to the sides of your head, to your temples and down to your ears and around to the back of your head. Your attention now goes up to the very top of your head, right to the very crown of your head. Just focus on the very top of your head. Now to end this little meditation, what I'd like you to do is to focus on your entire body, all together from your toes right to the top of your head, to the tips of your fingers. Your body all in one piece, comfortably sitting there. And at any time you feel like it, you can just let your eyes gently open. Hello and welcome to Internal Map of Reality, Session 6, Part 1, Life Values. And we'll be starting this new session dealing with our values and why we have them and what they are and how we can use them to spruce up our internal map of reality. So the whole goal of this course is to uh, enable us to live as full a life as you want, okay? No restrictions. So, a topic or a quote that I like to, uh, to introduce is from Napoleon Hill. And I've been showing a few of Napoleon Hill's quotes. And this one, I think, is really relevant to life values. It goes like this. The starting point of all achievement is desire. Keep this constantly in your mind. Weak desire brings weak results, just as a small fire makes a small amount of heat. The starting point of all achievement is your desire. So, keeping that in mind, we'll be going through this session talking about how to maximize this driving force sometimes called a, a cybernetic force. Okay, well, we're at session six, and we've done so far as we've looked at why we have a map and what it is. We've looked at modes of thinking. We looked at our belief systems, and we've looked at filters, and we've just finished up our timeline. And now we're going to go into values. And just a quick mention that there are resources, and if you want to just stop this video, you can read these resources up. I won't go over them again in detail. The, the main one I want to point out is that I really appreciate the patrons who have helped uh, supporting this. And as we develop these, these course materials, hopefully in the near future, we could be looking at uh, sessions where we can get together as a group and uh, explore all these different concepts. Again, if you want to contact me or Rose, here are our contact information. And if you want to share with me something about your past and your future uh, goals, that would be fantastic. So please feel free to reach out to me at sto2015 at protonmail.com. Okay, so we're looking at the internal map reality life values. And so what are values? Now, I, I like to have this at the very top because the word values can be interpreted different ways. And if you uh, have a sociology training, then you might interpret the term values in a very specific, uh, more scientific way. So I'm going to address that and talk about how we are referring to, to values. Then we'll talk about the importance of dreaming why it is important to dream. Then, if you haven't done so, we're going to talk about how to generate a list of values. And, um, you, know, if you, you know, if you don't have that, you need it. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. 
as it's like a map. It's like if you if you don't know where you want to go, it's going to be hard to tell people how to, how to help you get there. Then uh, once you've got the list, then we got to work with it a bit. We've got to uh, clean it up a bit. We got to sort it and then organize it. And there are some issues that can happen with things in our list of of, uh, of values that can cause some conflicts. Then once we've generate the list and we sorted it and cleaned it up, then we can begin to internalize the list and activate it and call it as something that I like to call it as your hierarchy of values. It's a system, right? It's a value system. It's It will become a really core driving force. And, and I'll mention it again. If you know anyone who's highly successful, they have very specific values in their life that they're following and they're trying to achieve. So some concepts that we'll be working with. I'm going to introduce a concept called crunching up and crunching down. I could not come up with a better phrase. I picked this up from when I was originally studying this material. Um, and I just can't think of a better phrase for it. How to crunch up and crunch down in terms of your value hierarchy. Then we'll talk about uh, lifelong goals. This is kind of tied in with values, but these are things that you've always held, maybe even since as a child, you've had this goal to do something. And your values system should be tied into your lifelong goals and tied into your lifelong script. And to find uh, another topic or an area that I'd like to uh, you know, just talk about and make you aware of, and it's kind of important. Some people have desires that are really trying to move you away from something. You don't want to live something again. You don't want to experience You're trying to get away from something. So these desires are really kind of like little pits, little pitfalls, little areas that can cause some problems. Okay, so we're going to look at how to make sure all of your uh, values are moving you towards what you want. So what are the values? Well, values are, are really pretty simple at a very, very high level. You can look at this slide here and you can see things like family, health, career, um, wealth, love, you know, friends, you know, wisdom. And these are the overall categories. And I kind of believe that if, if you look at your list of things you want, they'll tend to fall into these categories. So in terms of crunching up and down, let's start with this. If you think of something like health, you can crunch down in terms of the detail of what health means to you. What does health mean to you? And you crunch down, you go down into the details. Maybe health is uh, related to the food you eat. Maybe health for you is related to the type of exercise that you can do. Maybe health for you is mental. Maybe it's your mental attitude. So when you when you go up to the very, very top level, health can mean many, many, many things to people. And so when we're generating the list, you might find that you have a very specific item that's crunched way, way, way down, like saying you want to have an organic garden. Well, maybe that can be crunched up. And if you look at it, it really has to do with health, right? Perhaps. Okay. So these desires are can be categorized into a few, maybe a half dozen categories. But your values should really be tied into your dreams. When you dream of something that you really want to, to do into the future, or if you dream of something you did in the past, in that dream should be all the things that you really strive for and desire. So again, these, these goals or these values are lifelong. They're things that you will always want and always want into the future. And it is possible, sure, your values can change. And this is why I recommend that you redo your value list periodically, maybe once or twice a year. I do it at least two or three times a year. Just write down what are the things that are of value to me. Has it changed? And this will become very important. Because everything in your value list should be things that are important, things that matter to you. The things that you must have 
in your life, right? And there's no trade-offs. You won't trade off, you know, uh, your health for something else. It's very, very important. So these values are the things that you hold to be the most important things in your life. What's important to you? And they're not necessarily what someone else thinks is important. Okay, so we've talked about how your family and friends and your work can affect your your values and your beliefs. No, this this is tied into what you really want in your life. And I'll mention this at this point here that each of these values, things that are important to you, will generate many, many beliefs about what you need to do to satisfy those values. So it is connected to your belief system. I like to think that your values are the tree and your beliefs are the leaves on the branches. So each branch of your value system can have many, many, many leaves. And each leaf is a belief about what you need to do to feed that branch. So what is it? What to free to be free to dream, you know, to be that child again. And there's a lot of work. And if you Google the inner child or you search for the inner child, you will find all kinds of information on that. In your inner child is a desire. Maybe as a child you wanted to fly. Maybe as a child you wanted to be a doctor. Maybe as a child you wanted to do whatever. Or you can actualize those things and maybe not do exactly what your childhood dream was, but you can live in it. For instance, if as a child you wanted to be a pilot, and today you know you can't be a pilot, but maybe you can work in the aero industry. Maybe there's a way of participating in that industry, uh, and the tourist aspect of the of the of the flying uh, industry, the aeronautics industry. Okay, so we'll talk about that: how to crunch down from a desire into something that's really doable for you. The key is though, you dream. You don't have any restrictions and think as big as you want you know I call it your personal movie now you can take a risk with these and you can communicate your dream to others and to be aware yes I know people will tend to throw cold water on your dream and say ah oh, Steve you can never do that but that's okay you will meet people who will say hey I have that dream too or I know who you should talk to. So learn to separate the the no-sayers or the no-doers, the ones that are naysayers. Separate those out and say, okay, that's interesting. But be attracted to the people when they hear you talk about your dream. They go, wow, I have a dream like that. Or I know who can help you. Go here, talk to this person. So the way to get help with your with your desires, with your dreams, with your values is to share them openly and just be aware yes you will meet the naysayers but you know let them be they can they can be as negative as they want but be attractive to the people who want to help you and help others okay and there are reward, there are rewards for meeting your dreams and it's nice to put rewards associated with your dreams so how do you generate the list well it's really quite simple get a piece of paper and i say a piece of paper not a computer screen, a piece of paper and a pencil, and write it down. Now, we've talked about your modes of thinking. When you actually write down your wish list, you are incorporating your your um, your kinesthetic, your feeling, your touch, your writing. You're incorporating your visual. You have to look and visually write it. You're incorporating your um, your your verbal a part of your cortex and you're actually processing it and you're more involved it makes it more of a associated experience so we, i want you to be really really connected to generating this list and the best way to do that is to take a pencil and a piece of paper and write it by hand okay physically be involved so when you're generating the list Put on some soft music, get a cup of tea, relax, you know, get some privacy and get into a really, really calm alpha mode and start writing down 
anything. Don't worry about the order of them. Don't worry if there's duplicates. Just sit down and do it as soon as you can. Start today or tonight and you know, be flexible, be relaxed, and put no limits. Whatever it is you want out of your life, put it down. Do not judge. Do not judge. Just put it down. And, you know, you might find that some of them are similar. For instance, you might want to have a, um, a BMW and a Mercedes-Benz. That's okay. Put it down. It, don't worry at this point about rationalizing the list. Don't worry about sorting it. We're going to deal with that in the next session. But in this session, all I want you to do is to put them down. There is one caveat. Don't worry about it too much at this point, but just be aware that everything you put down there will have a price tag associated with it. And I've often heard the expression, you can get whatever you want out of your life. Right? You can get all of your desires met if you're willing to pay the price, either before or after. I know we're used to putting things on, on credit cards, and there's a problem if you get something out of your uh, wish list that you want and you don't pay for it, you pay for it later, but you will pay for it. I like to try to pay for things in advance. And those that's the reason for that is that if you pay, if you do the hard work and pay in advance, then when you get it, you own it. You don't own anyone and there won't be anything to worry about. Well, that's your exercise 13, generating a list. I will uh, create a short little video to help you with that. And if you're in the Patreon, you'll get uh, a video on exercise 13 listing your values and you know really do it have fun with it make a list don't worry about how long it is don't don't worry about what's in the list just generate it and the next session we'll talk about sorting the list that will be in part two we'll do that so enjoy have fun and you know again do the exercises even if they do seem really simple and if you have any difficulty at all with the exercises, you know, reach out to me. Don't worry about that. Just, you know, send me an email. Or if you're in the Patreon, you can um, combine it or hit me with a, uh, a message to the message system. That's it for uh, part one of session six. And we will see you in the next session. Welcome to the Internal Map of Reality Exercises. This is exercise 13, Listing Your Values. And this short video will just go into some of the steps that you will um, go through to just find out what are the key things in your life that you want. And what do you want out of your life? And as we mentioned in the main presentation, Desires can be categorized under a handful of sort of global topics or what I would call highly crunched up general topics. There's some of the things you want might deal with your family. Some things might deal with health. Some things might deal with the people you love or wanting love in your life. They might be your dreams, okay? Or they could be really crunched down and specific, like wanting a specific type of car, or wanting a particular type of job, or wanting to travel to a particular location somewhere on our planet. But the most thing that's in common with your values is that they are lifelong goals, something that you may have always wanted all of your life. So we're going to begin generating this list, and I'd like you to take your time with it, maybe do some tonight, or do some each day and review them, look at the list, but make sure that you write them down. Don't just keep them in your head. Don't put them in a spreadsheet. Use pencil and paper. As I mentioned before, it involves more of your senses if you're actually writing. It's physical. You're, you're involved. You're associated with it. So be free to go back to when you were a child and think of what you want to do into your future. Don't put any restrictions there. Think big, you know. So start with the list. 
no limits, and start today. But what you, I'd like you to do is each day pull up that list and just look at it for a few minutes. And you might take something off. You might add something. But don't worry about how many things are in it. And don't worry if it's a high-level thing such as uh, wanting love in your life or if it's a specific thing about wanting to be with a particular person. It's okay. You know, okay, the level of detail, whether it be general or specific, is okay. Just be flexible. Okay? So, generate the list and put everything that you can in into it. Think of all the possibilities. Think big. And don't, don't be restricted by anything that someone else might say or uh, some ideas you might have. You know, so it could be very specific things like, you know, wanting a, a new job or a particular type of job or in a particular type of industry. That's okay. What we'll be doing after we generate the list, we'll be, you know, clumping things together and resorting them so that it's a much more manageable thing. But at this point, exclude nothing from your list, right? And again, take time with it. Allow yourself some time to uh, work with this list and to generate it and to get it as complete as possible. Everything you could possibly want. And then uh, in our next session, we will begin to organize that list. But go for it and enjoy. Welcome to bonus topic number 12, B012. And today's topic is called 21 Questions, the Three Realms. So what we'll be doing, we'll be going through the three realms and looking at how life questions are asked and how they are answered. Now, I believe, this is my personal belief, that all our questions, if asked, are responded to. But they're responded to in A, the format that we've asked them, and B, depending on what source that we've gone to. Um, there's a quote, uh, knock and the door shall be open. You know, ask a question and it shall be answered. So the, the thing is, uh, and the purpose of this short video, is to go over the three types that I've identified. And they deal with our conscious realm, where you'll be asking questions more like, how do I do something? Then the unconscious realm is more along the lines of, should I do this? And then the unconscious realm will deal with more of a path resolution, you know, what will happen, you know, if I do this in the future, where will this path take me? So asking questions about our personal lives and our future, it goes back a long ways. So people have used wishing wells. They've gone to support groups to get answers to questions and guidance. They've used pendants and tarot cards and I Ching, all of which I personally have used and found them, you know, in one way or another of benefit. But notice that they're very common and they go way, way, way back in history. And you yourself may have used a form of oracle to get answers to questions. So the thing is, I believe that there are three primary ways of asking questions and of getting answers. Uh, one is that we can get detailed instructions or answers to things. And these detailed uh, instructions are only as accurate as the level of detail and accuracy of our questions. So if we ask someone how to bake a cake, they will say, uh, you know, basically, you know, you need flour and water, maybe an egg, and you know, maybe some spices. But if you ask someone how to bake an apple upside down cake, 
you'll get specific instructions on how to do that. The other type of answers and questions that we are confronted with are more in the way of yes, no. Um, is this red? Yes. Is it purple? No. Is it, uh, can I eat this? Yes or no. So these closed ended questions uh, elicit closed and ended answers. And finally, the third type is what I call signs or symbols. And um, signs and symbols are more always in our present world. Or they're all around us. We just need to be able to observe them. So there's not so much a question we ask, although you can. Um, it's more the quest, our life quest, and other signs and symbols to show that we're going on the right path. <clears throat> and the fourth possible type of answer and question is the void. I'm not going to go into those today. That's for another uh, topic area. So I'll leave the void alone for now. So when we're in our conscious realm, we can ask questions on how do I do specific things? And we can get very, very, very detailed, specific step-by-step -step instructions. And they're very end result oriented. Uh, if you do these specific things, you will get these results. Uh, I sometimes like to think of them as being goal-oriented. As I mentioned before, um, a support group is a really good example of that. You go to a support group with a specific issue that you need help with, and there's all kinds of support groups. It could be a friend. It could be uh, a loved one that you go to. Now, here's the trick with conscious realm questions. They are only going to be, the answers are only going to be as detailed as your question. Right? They're only going to be as relevant as your question. So that's number one. And number two, if you ask questions but do not listen, then people will stop responding. Then your conscious realm will stop responding. The more you pay attention to the, to the answers you're getting, the more your conscious realm will respond to you, and the more responsive it will come. And the third thing is that if you uh, get the uh, answers to the conscious realm type instructions, and you don't follow them, there too that you will get a similar kind of result where uh, your conscious realm will be less responsive. It won't stop completely, but it will get kind of uh, non-responsive. And you can see this in a, in a friend. If you have someone that has been a good ally and has been giving you advice, and you really haven't been following the advice, well, what do they do? Well, they kind of stop giving you advice. Eh? So the key with the conscious realm, ask specific questions. The more specific, the better. And listen and follow. The second type is what I call the unconscious realm. And here you get uh, yes-no type answers. Um, you have to ask closed-ended questions, and you get very specific closed-ended answers, i.e. yes or no. And you can follow a progression now with this. Uh, I used to play a game as a kid, you know, um, you know are you getting hotter? or getting colder to a particular topic. So you would ask someone a question, and they would say, oh, you're getting colder. You ask them another question, oh, you're getting warmer. Oh, you're really warm. Oh, now you're hot. So th this kind of zeroing in with very uh, logical and progressive asking questions. Now, there's a technique called body talk that I've studied, and I highly recommend you check it out. Body talk can be used with uh, humans, or animals or plants. And the way it works is that the subconscious will always answer and it will always answer truthfully. This is the principle of a lie detector test, right? You, it's very hard to uh, fudge lie detector tests. So how does that work? So here in this picture, you can see that the practitioner is holding on to this young boy and she is asking a specific question and a series of questions to figure out what is going on with the health of this young boy. The body responds yes or no, specifically to all the questions. Now, what's interesting about body talk 
is that the person doesn't need to know the answers consciously. Your subconscious will answer for you. Uh, the last time I heard was that the Australian uh, Health Department uh, recommended body talk for people in the field, for emergency response people. Because if they show up at a scene and someone is unconscious, how do they know what's going on with them? Well, um, they used to. I don't know where they still are. I should check into it. But they would use body talk. They've all been trained in body talk. And they would just hold the person and ask them a question. And they would understand whether the person is responding with a yes or no. This is true if you uh, are very, very observant and you ask someone a question in a yes-no type frame, they will, their body will tell you the answer even if they answer the opposite, right? So you, you can tell. I'll give you an example. If you ever try to shake your head no and say yes at the same time, it's pretty hard. You can do it, but you really have to be conscious and do it. So your body subconsciously always wants to give you the correct answer. Okay? The third uh, area is the unconscious realm. And the unconscious realm um, doesn't give sort of a detailed cookbook type recipe to your uh, answer your question. And it doesn't give you a specific yes or no, but it will give you signs and symbols. And it can be kind of mysterious in a way. Uh, I like to think of it as walking through uh, a forest. And if you've ever gone in a walk through the forest with someone who's very attuned to nature, they will point things out to you that you may not even have seen. You may be walking on a very precious plant and not even know it. So uh, an example of unconscious realm, greater realm type of questions and answers we fall in the category that I feel that falls in the category of something like the I Ching, the tarot cards, um, palm reading, tea leaves. These are things looking at signs and symbols to give you information about your reality. So the key is here, pay attention to the type of question you're, ans you're asking, and then you that will give you an idea of where to look. Also, pay attention of whether you're asking yourself deep personal questions in your subconscious, in which case, ask yes-no questions and expect yes-no answers. If you are looking for a greater thing, greater, so is my path correct? Am I going in the, is my journey, life journey correct? and you want to look for signs and symbols, you will be presented with signs or symbols to indicate whether your path is the right path. It's up to you to be observant and watch them. Okay, now we could go on for a long time with this, but pay attention to it. And, you know, if you have other examples of uh, the types of questions we get, and the types of answers that are subsequent, you know, let me know, reach out to me. But this should give you an idea that if you're looking for uh, answers, pay attention to how you're asking the question and where you're asking the question from. Okay, well, thank you for participating in tonight's premiere. And if you have any questions, or any comments, you can put them in the chat, or you can email me, and the email's in the description, or if you're a Patreon member, you can just drop me a message. So again, thank you, and we look forward to seeing you in the next premiere.